Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the month of October. Can you believe it's October already? I was thinking about this today, how quickly the year has gone, despite the fact that, you know, well, gosh, we've had a lot of um, upheaval, we've had a lot of change. We've had a lot of delay energy, things being really slow, people being stuck at home, people not being able to do things. I certainly wasn't doing much for some months of the year earlier. Um, but when I reflect and I look, I mean, we're virtually at the end of the year. It's pretty incredible. So yeah, it just sprung up all of a sudden, didn't it? Today, I'm gonna to go through the major planetary positions this month. We're going to be talking about Mars, Saturn, what else have I got here? Pluto, Rahu Ketu, Mercury, Sun in Libra. An overall note, so we've got a lot to cover in the overview. And then in the mini readings, I'm going to be covering what old ground are you covering? Because we've got Mars retrograde, we've got Mercury retrograde for you. We're going to have a look at where things are moving forward for you. So Saturn's moving forward, this is great. Um, and we're also going to have a look at the full moon and the new moon as well in the mini reports. And I'm going to be including full moon and new moon in the mini reports because I have now phased out the meditation. So I'm really sorry if you were really enjoying those or you liked those or were relying on those. I had a really nice comment from one of you saying that I'll be able to bring them back. And yes, I do believe I will be able to bring those back in time. Um, I'm looking forward to that. So stay tuned. I just, just because I'm, I've started the card reading thing, I decided to wind down the meditations because it was all just getting a bit too much. So, but the good news is with the card readings, I really feel like I can be able to do one a week. So that'll be great fun. Um, thank you as well to the person who mentioned my microphone sound is a bit low. I did exactly what you suggested. I went into my control panel. I increased the input volume. Thank you for that detailed tip. That was very, very, very helpful. So I've done that and hopefully the sound is better. Do let me know in the comments below if um, there's any issues, technical or otherwise sound, anything. You just let me know and I'll look to rectify that. Okay, let's take a look at these planets, shall we? What is gonna happen in the sky this month? By the way, people in Melbourne. My heart goes out to you who are in Melbourne. My heart also goes out to the people um, afflicted by the fires in California and Oregon. I have a really good friend who's there. She had to leave her home. It's very scary stuff. The elements, I really understand um, how serious that stuff is. So my prayers and thoughts are with anyone who's in a really tough area. The people in Melbourne, of course, my heart goes out to you. I know that lockdown is very strict there. I did look into the astrology of Melbourne. I even put, plugged in a Melbourne chart. I looked at the astrology of Rupert Murdoch. I looked at Dan Andrews, Scott Morrison, whoever I could find. I was plugging them all in and I, I remember spending a good day or two. And um, I was this close to doing a video for you guys, because I think it was requested that a second one be done. I'm glad I didn't do it in the end because the few predictions that I had in there would have been false anyway. It's an extraordinary situation what's happening there. I feel very unequipped to comment on it. Um, even with the astrology, it was just kind of, things were jamming in my head. I couldn't make sense of it. I couldn't give you um, a solid prediction or any of that, but have a listen to what I'm about to say now and see how this would apply to the situation there in Melbourne. Um, it's interesting that the card reading that I did on Melbourne, which I haven't ever done that on a city before, but I think it was in the Discussing Australia's chart video. Um, it's interesting there, I said something about they've done a deal and that was very interesting because then I read some news uh, a couple of weeks later or a week or two later and I was like oh wow they have done a deal so that was really interesting this whole card thing is fascinating sometimes where astrology isn't able to provide 
certain information, the cards are very useful and I find it to be an incredible tool. So thank you as well to everybody who watched that and encouraged me and said that you'd like more. That is so good to know. So thank you so much for that. And I will be continuing the Masters series as well because that's just a fun thing that I do. Um, I think I like doing it because it gets me to practice my editing skills and storytelling skills and of course my astrological skills too so um, yeah so that's the overview of the channel let's get into the planets let's see what's happening in October oops I haven't taken too much time I think it's all right let's have a look so I've got the note here retrograde Mars opposes the Sun absolutely this could be tense and we had this earlier I don't know if you remember in a past report I did I think it was for August and I said the dates 23rd 24th 25th I think those were the dates that I said would be really tense and difficult and that was quite a hard square Mars and Saturn were in I think it's very interesting I had comments from some of my regular clients um, come and tell me that they were having some issues at that time so that was that turned out to be um, a bit of a tense time for some people. We're going to have more of that again because Mars is going to retrograde back into that similar territory. So I've got the note here. Retrograde Mars is going over a point of tension that I mentioned for end of August. Yeah. So dates when things could be a bit tense from a Mars point of view. Just very loosely, I'm kind of seeing from the very start of October through to mid-October. There could be some tension um, even though right now it does feel a bit calm here in Sydney it does anyway maybe there are some parts of the world where things are very challenging right now but here in Sydney it feels a bit calm um, there's an energy reader I watch in England who was saying that there's been a wave of divine energy come through uh, I think people have been quite exhausted as well people are feeling numb um, because of the lead up you know, it's like these this last week or so. So I'm recording this on the 21st of September. So this today and this last week has been relatively calm. And it was Amanda Ellis, um, if you're interested, who mentioned that there's been a wave of divine energy that's come through that's kind of calmed the whole world down. Uh, I know as well when I tune into Wendy Kennedy, I love Wendy Kennedy. She does amazing reports. She talked about that things will be you know that there'll be some respite before the election so so yeah um, I feel like the planets this month anyway these notes I have to get through I mean it's jam-packed there's a lot of activity in the sky so as I said we've got Mars opposing the Sun Mars in retrograde going back over that old ground into that point of tension uh, that we had earlier so that was kind of end of August so if you remember back there if you were going through anything end of August September 30 though we've got Saturn going forward so this is great news so October is going to show perhaps some forward momentum in some areas and in the world of course it will because you know the election the big election is coming and um, there's going to be some forward momentum in regards to that I've got a note here anyone with heavy Saturn in their chart you can expect, expect progress in life, with work, with relationships. I have found over the years of doing this that things do open up for me. I get more business, more um, opportunities and all kinds of things start to come in around this time for me and through to Feb of the following year. So um, if you've got a heavy Saturnian chart then um, know that there could be some progress you know if you've been feeling stuck if you've been feeling delayed if you haven't been getting jobs or getting work or you haven't been able to expand your business or all this kind of thing look out for it that should it, it'll be slow and gradual movement but it'll start to happen for you um, Pluto stations around 4th 5th October and will be moving forward as well so that's very interesting too again I would say that if you've been stalled in relation to work, career, any of these things, um, 
we have some good news, so this is good. Rahu Ketu Axis, well now they are getting settled in their new positions. Are you noticing any changes? Are you noticing anything there? I haven't noticed too much. Um, maybe the stillness that I've been observing over the past week could be to do with Ketu in the 8th. Could be. But again, I will keep observing and as I discover the feel of those two, I will share with you um, what I see. We've got Mercury going retrograde October 15th. Right, this is going to be interesting. Um, how I'm reading this for the collective is I'm reading that I think it'll be a good time to protest interestingly I've been keeping an eye on the protest situation I think London is doing amazing I think they're getting out there and protesting making their voices heard I think the police there are also showing that they are part of humanity um, they're not being horrible to people I think you know it's, what I like that's happening there is that it's the peaceful like the nature of the protests are peaceful and um, the police seem to have some understanding where I've, whereas I've seen footage of people trying to do tiny little things down in Melbourne and the police are being just I, I don't have words it's very sad um, to see that they're the police are just putting on their uniform and you know, really being horrible to elderly ladies holding up a little plaque or something, you know, um, with their white hair and I was just shocked at some of the footage that's come out. So, um, but yeah, as I do say, you know, Mercury goes retrograde, could this be a time? Communications, this is happening in Libra and that is the area of the masses, right? And it's communication. Will this be a time of more protests? I've got the question, will you be heard or understood? Uh, and here I've got the note, I, could be, I believe it could be a great time if, if um, you are interested in that. So Mercury seems to me to be more powerful than the Sun. Um, you know, Mercury there in Libra in a great friend's sign. And the Sun is going to be debilitated right so this is um, sun will be debilitated from 18th october to 17th november so sun is going to be weak and mercury is retrograde so he's more powerful right um slower and more powerful and closer to the earth so this is a terrific time i think for the people to to gather and have their say yeah, Mercury more powerful than the Sun. Sun represents the ruling elite, absolutely. And it, it makes me question, like, why are they having an election at this time? You know, surely the elite should have consulted a Vedic astrologer <coughs> and said, when's a good time for the election? Because I would have thought a better time would be, I don't know, when the Sun is in Leo or something. Um, but Sun in Libra, debilitated from 18th October to 17th November. So, what does that mean, right? How is that going to play out? The other thing I did was I had an overall look at the transit chart just to see, well, what can I suggest here? As an overview, overall over, overview, and I had the idea <clears throat> that the masculine energies will be weak um, over this time. So Mars and Sun will be weak. Uh, Venus in Virgo is a very interesting placement. Venus is going to be in Virgo. So although not strong for relationships, it's great for work, right? Anyone out there who's got Venus in Virgo, you know, it, it might be a concerning placement, Venus debilitated, right? Well, for relationships, it will make you work harder and you will come across lots of different situations. And if relationships are really important to you and in your chart, we can see you know, I've seen people with debilitated Virgo, but they'll have true love yogas. And they'll have, they'll, you can see their destiny is, okay, they have to be in a relationship this time, right? Sometimes I can see a debilitated Venus and you can see that, well, relationships aren't so important for that person this time around. Sometimes you can see, though, it is important. Venus in Virgo can, will be a wonderful partner um, because by the time they've learnt all that they have to learn and learn all the lessons, they'll be a wonderful partner. But... One of the notes I have here is that Venus in Virgo, it's fantastic for work. Um, 
She makes a great worker there. I know it's not a great placement for love and, and romance, but if she's working, she can be very effective. So yeah, I've got the note here that the, I feel like the masculine energies overall are going to be a bit weak um, over this time, sort of October, November type time. Venus and Virgo, let me just take a quick look at that. Well, how are we doing for time? It's not too bad. I can have a little, open up my transit chart. I wish I could show you this as well. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out the technology so that, you know, one thing at a time. I only just worked out the sound recently. So, all right, let's take a look at the um, Aries transit chart. Uh, so when is Venus going to be in Virgo? She's going to be there. Okay, sort of end of October. So I didn't talk too much about that. We might talk about that more in the November report. We'll talk about that in the November report. I'll do a bit more analysis on that because I didn't concentrate on her this time. But I do feel like overall that male energies are going to be weak. Uh, even though, well, Saturn is strong. Saturn isn't really male or female. I don't see it that way. It's kind of an old man, I guess. But um, Jupiter's pretty happy going forward. But the, the really macho energies of Sun and Mars are not, um, not looking so strong to me. And yeah, as an overall analysis, I'm saying this could be a great time for peaceful protests. And peaceful protests, nothing crazy, right? Just like the congregation of people um, who are in alignment, who are just being together and being peaceful and you know just expressing a view right silent well, not silently but peacefully peacefully it's that that's what needs to happen all right let's take a look at the moon situation so what are the moons that we're going to have in this october on the 2nd of october we're going to have a full moon in pisces uttrabhadra pada nakshatra so this is really interesting because this is where the son of the celestial architect lives. And then on the 17th of October, we've got the new moon in Virgo, Chitra Nakshatra, right? Very, very end of Virgo. So now that's where the celestial architect lives, right? So we've got celestial architect living there in Chitra, 17th October. And we've got the son of the celestial architect there in the full moon that's happening on the 2nd of October. So this is really cool because I believe that the moon energy this month is really asking us to architect a brand new reality, completely new. What do we want to create, right? So we're all peacefully protesting and gathering and doing all that and we know what to say no to, but what do we want? What, we want the space, we want a boundary around it and we want to say, okay, no, we don't want X, Y, Z. What do we want to fill in that space? What do we want there? Do we know? So that is what we're going to have to concentrate on, I believe, um, this month. And if you're like me, you can't be going out to protest because I can't. Um, firstly, no one's doing them here in Sydney. And the other thing is, um, you know, um, yeah, it's just not the right time for me. I can't be going out to do that kind of thing. And for various reasons, you might not be able to either. But what you can do is you can do what I'm going to do, and that is envisage the future that you want. And I would say on the 17th of October, this new moon is going to be a really good time. And I'm definitely going to do that in my fantastic bullet journal, which I have here, and I am using. But like, I'm not using the daily thing as much. I use the to-do list bit a lot because I have a lot to do. And the monthly bit. So it's really interesting when you use these things, what actually gets used and what doesn't. But anyway, that's another story. I am definitely going to be on the 17th of October writing down what it is that I would like to see going forward in our future, right? We need to architect a new reality. It's so important. So I've got the note here, through both of these moons, we are envisaging and putting in place long-term foundations. What kind of a world do we want to live in? You know, and we get to energetically create that now. Very exciting. Um, I've also got the note here, this is an interesting note. 
I'll read it out directly. It's probably not the most diplomatically phrased thing that I'm about to say, but I've got the note here. Voting is a load of nonsense. <laughs> I didn't mean that. It's Look, it's not a load of nonsense. If I was in America, I would go and vote in some way. I would think up who is the you know, uh, lesser of two evils and I would participate. And I would participate, why? Because it's, you know, what's told in the Bhagavad Gita, right? Arjuna sinks into his chariot and he's like, oh no, 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 I don't want to fight, I don't want to, I don't want to play this game. And Krishna comes to him and he says, it's just a game, go out and play it. You know, you, you don't have this body forever. You're going to shake it off and, and get a million new ones and you've had a million of them before so fight play play the game and yeah on the one hand you know i can be writing this quote that says voting is a load of nonsense and then on the other hand you know after reading a bit of the bhagavad gita you, you get inspired and you think well yeah i'll play the game right um so it's a very interesting time. It's a very interesting time. But what I was thinking about this with the whole election thing is that if you go there with the intentions of what it is you want to create, and in your heart you've got the genuine intentions of, you know, just I perceive that that side isn't so good, but I perceive this side to be a little bit better, or whatever it is, right? And in your heart, you're holding that image of what you want to create. And if you go and vote in that frame of consciousness, you've done the right thing, right? Your intentions are, are good. There was a quote on my Greek um, app. Let me bring this up now. I hope I can find it. And it, it really kind of summed up. It was it talked about a gift, didn't it? Let me see if I can find that. How are we doing for time? Oh my gosh, we're running out of time. Okay. Uh, let me find this quote very quickly. It was about the energy of a gift. Aha. Yep. This was by Seneca, one of my favorite Greeks on my little phone here. Um, he said, a gift consists not in what is done or given, but in the intention of the giver or the doer. So when you go to vote, as long as you have that wonderful intention in you that, you know, I wish for this country to be prosperous and beautiful again and all the things that you really want. And if you take that consciousness in there, I mean, I think it doesn't really matter who you vote for because, because your intentions were good and you want a good thing and you're using your imagination to create what it is that you really want. And I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to put it up on the screen, actually, so that you can read along with me. And <clears throat> one of the things I'm going to say in the mini reports is that, you know, and I've got the note here, fire up your imagination and really visualize and picture what you want your world to be like. And I found this, and I'm going to put it on the screen. I found this on Facebook of all places. I'm not a big Facebooker. I don't really interact very much there, but I will flick through the news thing and I'll read what's there and there are some nice astrology groups that I'm part of some very nice spiritual groups that I'm part of so that's why I hang out there a bit now and then um, and I saw this on the screen I really liked this this suited me so it says within our lifetime we will see all the world's lakes oceans rivers and waterways restored to purity as well as soil and farmland we will cease using toxic chemicals on our food pharmaceutical companies will be dismantled holistic healing practices will be the norm, governments will be eradicated, and the people of each nation will govern themselves. Clean, free energy will be utilized. Big changes are coming. So that is some inspiration. Apologies, the camera got cut, which it does when the memory card fills up. I know that now. Um, I think I was saying something about, I don't know, Oh yeah, the Facebook thing, being inspiring. I think, And I think the word inspiration didn't come into the thing. I said that this is an example of something that's inspirational. Now, this is just something that I saw and that I liked and that I'm sharing with you. But maybe you've got a very different thing that you see and that you like. Maybe, maybe you like pharmaceutical companies and that's fine. I'm not saying that pharmaceutical companies are bad or that we should get rid of all of that or no, I, I have used paracetamol this year every now and then so that's 
um, you know, yeah, I, I need that stuff myself. And But thankfully, actually, in order to heal what I've been going through, I've just used homeopathic medicines and they work beautifully. So, And I'm just about healed from what I had. So for me, you know, people like um, David Hawkins, Louise Hay, I've been following what they have suggested and it works. So when I put up on this screen that, you know, holistic healing practices will be the norm, I'm into that and I am doing that now and it's working. So, um, because I believe in it. Uh, and you've got to really believe that you can heal naturally. If you don't, it's going to be hard, right? Our minds are extremely powerful so powerful. I was thinking about this the other day that, you know, if I didn't believe I could heal 100%, how tough things would be, you know? Um, yeah, but I really believe. And it's slow. It's a slow road when you choose to heal yourself. It can be slow. And with the amount of Saturnian energy I've got, yeah, it, things happen slowly in my world. Um, things don't happen quickly for me. They never have um, and they they probably won't. So, um, but that's my chart. That's the setup of my chart. So we've all got a unique setup, don't we? But as I say, I mean, look, you might not like this vision of the future. You might be, as I say, working in a pharmaceutical company. You might like that kind of thing. You might, you might have different ideas. I'm just sharing what my idea is. And each one of us can visualize and come up with our architectural blueprint of the future what the society that we want we can each come up with that and hold that in our heart you know and um i believe that i believe that the majority will win you know and i think the majority of people want um a more natural life is what i think um and, and not to say that i don't like technology i do i'm using it right now you know um but in a balanced way. I'm not one of those people who's on the phone all the time and, you know, I'm not, um, I like technology in moderation. So anyway, guys, let's take a look at the mini readings. I'm excited to get into these. So why don't we introduce Aries Moon. Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this month, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the old ground that you're going to be covering because we've got a couple of retrogrades in the sky and we're going to take a look at what's new for you this month. So what old ground are you going to be covering? So Mars is retrograding in your 12th house. So this is nothing like old ground as in ages ago. This is kind of recent, the recent past. So you're going to be experiencing some of the recent past again. And you might be thinking, haven't I dealt with this? might be more positive in nature who knows so you could for you mars is retrograding in your 12th house you might be revisiting something in your imagination something maybe your dreams might recur you might have some recurring dreams at this time it's a possibility um, there might be an old spiritual lesson that you need to learn or you think haven't i done this but you're going to have a little check of that again okay so something along those lines look out for that Mars, well, so that's Mars. Mercury is retrograding in your seventh house. So something to do with business, your partnership, maybe your marriage, you're, you're going to revisit something there. So if there's something that you haven't fully dealt with or come to peace with, um, you might get another chance to, to really smooth it out or work it out, whatever it is. What's new this month? Okay, we've got Saturn moving forward. Yes, aren't we happy about that? I know I am. Um, look for the pace to change in your career. It won't be a fast paced change, but it may feel like a slight release in this area or slight opening or a, something relaxing a little bit in that area for you. Uh, 2nd October, we've got a full moon. So with this full moon, I'm saying let go of the old plans that you've had for your life. Okay, so what old architectural plans and dreams and visions have you had let them go okay this is a, just a good time to let them go it doesn't mean that you'll never be able to do that um, it just means that you're in a bit of surrender you're letting go you know and it, as i say it doesn't mean that that's over but let it go let it breathe 
okay and and who knows those things might happen for you so I've got the note old architectures old dreams clear them out do some clutter clearing if you're having trouble doing it in your mind or visualizing it or through your imagination a way to do that in the real world is um, to get rid of stuff put the newspapers in the bin um, take the old books somewhere where you can donate them whatever you have to do right um, <clears throat> the 2nd October is a really great time to do some clutter clearing. Now on the 17th of October we have a new moon. Now for you this is exciting. This is happening in your 6th house. So I've got the note here. Lay down grand new visions of the future. In Lay down grand new visions of the future. So yeah and for you I've got in terms of all kinds of things even like what kind of medical system do you want what kind of freedom do you want um, visualize for you and the collective this is in the sixth house so you can really it is a it is a thing of um, medical actually you can be if you're into the holistic healing thing and you like that you might not and that's okay um, I'm not trying to encourage anyone to do anything but um, definitely this is a great time for you to be envisaging how you want this world to be and that's on the 17th of October if you can sit down and write it out and write down what do I dream this world to be and what do I dream my personal world to be maybe you want financial freedom maybe you just want all all my bills taken care of every month so I don't have to worry about it and I can be creative and I can do my passion whatever it is write those things down um, Aries Moon it's it's looking like a pretty okay month um, and the other thing is that you're equipped here you're equipped to to handle whatever comes up so Aries Moon I wish you well and we are now going to welcome Taurus Moon Taurus Moon welcome thank you so much for joining so now this month as I'm saying to everybody that we're covering old ground because we've got two planets in retrograde and then there are some new things this month so let's take a look at the old ground you're going to be covering Mars is retrograding in your 11th house so you might be revisiting some issues to do with your friendships um, could be your professional networking circles <coughs> could even be to do with people you live with with um, could be to do with extended family that kind of thing but there's going to be some old issue and it's not an old old issue it's a recent issue you've just gone through it maybe you know a couple of months ago kind of thing it's, something's going to come back you might have to revisit it so if it didn't go so well um, before you get another opportunity to sort it out so this is good mercury retrograding in your sixth house so this could be to do with competition um, it could be to do with your work, your service in the world, your, you know, your LinkedIn contacts. I don't know, maybe somebody is going to come back or there was something that didn't quite happen or something started but it didn't come to fruition. Anyway, Mercury is going to recover that old ground that you've just gone through recently and you're going to get an opportunity to possibly sort it out. Um, yeah, I've got her old ground connected with competition, something like that. So Taurus Moon, what's new for you this month? We've got forward momentum, fantastic. Saturn's moving forward in your ninth house. So this could be a change of pace when it comes to career. Maybe if you've been looking for a mentor or a guru and you haven't been able to find one or that that's been stalled or something like that, because I remember I think many months ago I said this would be a great time for you with Saturn being in your ninth to find a guru or a mentor. Um, you'll be able to find somebody perhaps now or get the funds or the money if you have to hire somebody or whatever that is. These next few months could be really promising on that front. So that's fantastic. So um, as I say with Saturn, it's not kind of fast change. It's a slow change, right? But there, there should be some change. There should be some forward momentum. 
Um, it's a kind of slow burn forward momentum. All right, let's take a look at the moon situation. So 2nd October, you've got a full moon. We've all got a full moon. And I've got a very general message for everybody here, which is just to say, let go of old plans for your life. So any old dreams that you have had or that, you know, you architected a certain reality or you were like, you know, I, I want to live like this or I want this kind of big house and I want 2.5 kids and a dog and this and that, whatever it was, the idea is just let it go. It doesn't mean that it's never going to happen, but the idea is let it go and give it space to breathe, okay? It might happen, um, but just, just let it go at this time. Let go of all those old dreams. Old architectures, old dreams, let them go. Now, you can clutter clear if this helps. Sometimes we want a physical action, we want something to do. So my advice would be do some clutter clearing. Get rid of old books, get rid of old newspapers or whatever it is you have to get rid of. Um, that would be a good thing to do. Now, on the 17th of October, we've got a new moon. This is a lovely new moon. Um, this is the chance for you to lay down grand new visions of the future and it's happening for you in your fifth house so my question to you is what does creativity mean to you in your life right how do you express your innermost self and believe it or not we express ourselves constantly right when we buy something when we um, choose friends when we you know I don't know decide what to read or we're constantly creating we're constantly being creative how are you creative in your life all right look at it from that very big broad perspective that everything you do is a creative act and your life is a work of art you are the art that you're giving back to the collective look at yourself in that way um, the other thing that you want to look at at this new moon is your inner authority do you have your inner authority? Do you create what you want? And are you the person in charge of it? Or is there someone else always coming in with their opinion or something like that? Who are you? How do you uniquely express yourself? Really important. And are you owning your gifts? So look at the blueprint for your creativity. And on the second of, 17th of October, if you can actually sit down and write what you want, to see and this can be really broad this can be you know for the society as well this could be like i would love to see um creative music rooms you know in the community center at my you know near where i live or the artistic places where i can go and paint and be messy and all that kind of thing um, i know that they open that kind of stuff up in my area in england and yeah it, it was uh, amazing that they did that all right, Taurus Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, with every sign, I'm looking at what old ground are we covering because we've got Mars and Mercury. They're going into retrograde. So what old thing are we having to deal with from the recent past? And then what's new this month? So the old ground that you're covering, you've got Mars retrograding in your 10th house. So career-wise, you'll be revisiting old ground, recent old grounds. This is to do with your business, if you're self-employed, your profession. Uh, Mercury is retrograding in your fifth house. This is kind of interesting because this is, could be covering old ground with creative projects, which could be linking into your work. Um, so that's really interesting that you're going to be covering some old thing. It might also be to do with your children as well. So maybe there's something you've been trying to teach your children or they're trying to teach you or something like that and it's like there's a there's a covering of old ground so if there was something that you didn't quite do right you've got an opportunity to do it right now um, what's new for you this month okay we've got some forward momentum here we've got Saturn moving forward in your eighth house this is good um, the pace could pick up in relation to shared assets or resources if you've been depending on others or engaged with others, something shared, something like that, but things have been stuck, things have been still, maybe now you're going to have some forward momentum, some movement. So that's a really good thing. On the 2nd of October, we've got this beautiful full moon uh, in, I think I said, Purva. Where was that? Thrubhadrapada. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then we've got the new moon in Virgo, Chitra, Nakshatra. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this for you now 
I've got the note here for everybody, this is just across the board, let go of old dreams. If there are old dreams, old plans for your life, old architectures, old things that you wanted, maybe you wanted a certain house in a certain place, maybe that's changed now, maybe it's time to just let that go. I'm not saying that that will never happen, that's not it. When you let it go, it might actually breathe and it might actually grow, so let go of old plans. And on the 17th of October, new moon, this is really a time for you to visualize your new plans and write them down and architect that new reality. What do you want to see? Now for you, this new moon is happening in the fourth house of home. So how would you like to live? Um, you know, now's the time to re-architect your home life work balance. Okay. Um, you're transforming your personal economy and how you enjoy life. It's a good time to lay down lots and lots of new plans. So Gemini Moon, I wish you well. And we are now gonna welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, as with all signs, I've been going over the old ground that we're gonna be covering this month and the new things that we have to look forward to. So we've got some old ground to cover because Mars is retrograding and so is Mercury. So Mars is retrograding in your eighth house. Um, this is a time when you're going to be revising old, revisiting old ground with people you share assets with. Eighth house, yeah, for sure. And if you've had to depend on anyone, maybe you have to renegotiate um, some boundaries around shared assets, or if you're having to depend on people, maybe renegotiate some aspects of that. Um, and this could be, so you could be covering old ground. Maybe you tried to deal with this a month or two ago, but now it's like it's coming back for you to do it again. Mercury is retrograding in your third house. So this is covering old ground with friends. So maybe there's something that happened, you know, in the recent past. Um, and there's some lessons that you need to learn with colleagues or friends. So something might come back up again for you to do it better this time. What's new this month? Well, we've got some forward momentum, which is fantastic. We've got Saturn moving forward in your sixth house. So forward momentum in court cases, um, any legal matters, <clears throat> or at work if you're a service professional, perhaps competition has been on your back, um, or, or something to do with the competition. Maybe you've been draining time by looking at the competition and not doing your own work. That's a possibility too, right? But now is a time where you can focus on yourself and really move forward. So um, we have a full moon on the 2nd of October. Um, and in this, I've got a general message to say, let go of old plans of your life. So maybe you visualized your life a certain way. Um, let go of that. This is a time to just sort of really let go of whatever it is that you always wanted or longed for. It's not easy to do. And I'm not saying that that thing will never happen. That's not what I'm saying. Maybe if you let it go, it might have breathing space and it might grow, right? So, um, but the, the concept is really to let go of old architectures, old dreams. Right, and do clutter clearing if that helps you. Now, on the 17th of October, we have a new moon. This is a time to lay down some fantastic new plans for what you really do want. So sit and write down what you really want. That's a really great thing to do. Um, for you, the new moon is happening in the second house of family. So what does family mean to you? Um, what plans do you want to architect now for you and your family, right? Dream big. Dream big, dream of all the great stuff that you want to see happening. Maybe some of it is similar to those old plans that you're letting go of, but try and architect a new reality somehow. Come up with something brand new um, because we have gone through major changes in the world. And yeah, I'm sure you've got some new ideas as to what you want and how you want it. All right, Leo Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Just going to check the time quickly. We're okay. Um, what old ground are you covering? So with all signs, I'm looking at the old ground that we're covering. So we've got Mars and Mercury in retrograde. So we're going to cover some old ground. We're going to have a look at what that is for you. We're going to see what's new this month. So what old ground are you covering? So Mars is retrograding in your seventh house. Um, so you could be revisiting some issues to do with your business or to do with your marriage or some kind of partnership that's very significant to you might even be to do with your public if you've got like a massive social media following or something along those lines could be revisiting some old issue there 
um, Mercury is retrograding in your second house. So you could be revisiting old ground with family. Now's the time to communicate clearly who you are and what you want. Okay, so if there's been some issue with family um, in the recent past, you might get a chance to go over that old ground or cover that again, and um, you, you'll be able to get it right this time around. Now, what's new this month? We've got Saturn going forward in your fifth house, so you can expect some forward momentum. At nothing fast, by the way, so slow. This is Saturn, so but some sense of relief or slight expansion um, to do with your creative projects or your creativity. Could also be your children. If anything connected with any of that has been stalled or delayed or taking time, you know maybe look out for that forward momentum now. It should start to pick up a little bit. Um, we've got a full moon, 2nd October. I've got a general message there where I'm saying to everyone, let go of your plans for life. Let go of the things that you want to create, the old architectures, the old dreams. Okay, because we get, we've got some space and we want to create some new ones. So that's happening on the new moon. That 17th of October. Oh wow, this is huge for you. This is your first house of self. So you are going to want, in particular, Virgo moon to architect an entirely new reality for yourself and come up with those. It's the seeds. You want to plant the seeds and write down, write down what you really want. Everything to do with your health, to do with your wealth, your spirit, your soul, who you are, everything. Just write down all those big dreams for what you want on the 17th of October. It's a really lovely time to do that. All right, Virgo Moon, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So as with all signs, I'm looking at what old ground are you going to be covering? Because we've got Mars retrograding and Mercury retrograding. So there's something in the recent past that you're going to cover again, maybe. Um, and we're also going to look at what's new this month. Okay, so what old ground are you covering potentially? Um, here with Mars retrograding in your sixth house. Okay, so you might be revising, revisiting, I should say, uh, old ground regarding a legal matter possibly. Um, could be to do with your competition. Could be something to do if you're a service professional um, or any of that. Could be to do with that. Could be to do with your health as well, right? Um, so you might be covering some old ground or, or having something to deal with there. You've got Mercury retrograding in your first house. So you might be, yeah, this is health. You might be revisiting old ground regarding your health, absolutely. Um, your sense of wellness. So that, that is interesting. If you're feeling a bit tired, please take a break. Please rest. And I know you might be thinking, but life is so slow or I'm stuck or I'm not doing anything anyway. No, rest anyway. <laughs> like this is a unique time in history and it's very good to rest. Um, believe me. I, that's why I got sick, I think, at this time because the divine really wanted me to just rest and do nothing. And I went with it because I had to. Um, very difficult to do, but I did and I'm doing. I still rest each afternoon. I have to. Um, though I am resting with my laptop but anyway uh right what's new this month okay forward momentum yes we've got some forward momentum here good saturn's moving forward in your fourth house so you might have some forward momentum on any house related projects maybe there's been something you've been wanting to renovate or do or sort out or organize you will hopefully get the opportunity to do that now we've got full moon happening on the 2nd of october Across the board, I'm saying to everybody, let go of the old plans or dreams for your life. doesn't mean that they'll never happen. It just means let them go for a little while. Give them space, give them breathing room. Stuff might grow. Um, old architectures, old dreams. Clutter clear if this helps you. If you need a physical activity, if you need something to do, then clutter clear. It's a really good time to do that. And dust and get in all the nooks and crannies and sort, you know, clean, 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 do that. Um, so it makes Saturn happy as well. 17th October, we've got a new moon. Okay, this is the one where I'm saying to everybody, sit down and write down what you really want to create. It's a really, really good new moon to architect a brand new reality. 
12th house of spirituality. So this is happening for you in your 12th house of spirituality and escapism. So how is your spirituality changing? How is it changing, especially due to what's been going on in the world in 2020? Your spirituality must be reforming and changing and my goodness, I mean, you get the opportunity to, to really think about this on the 17th of October. This is wonderful. Um, how would you like to change your life so you, you can be more of your spiritual self, right? So would you like to perhaps not do that job, um, you know, working for the tobacco company? <laughs> I don't know. Like maybe, maybe that's not spiritual for you. Right? You know, you're like, I've got to get out of here. Um, I would understand that. Maybe you like it and that's fine, but it, you might not. And if you're in a job where it's spiritually not enriching you, and you're like, I can't do this anymore, then make some changes. Um, maybe on the 17th of October, it's it's a matter of writing down the dream that you have or the thing that you want to do or, um, you know, little things. You know, and that's how I started doing the astrology. It was just little things. Like I, I was just watching the other astrologers and, you know, little things like my mom saying, hey, you can do that. And then, you know, bookmarking, some and then getting books and and then you know getting a proper reading and, and then like little tiny steps you know like I took all these tiny tiny steps so new moon is a really great time to architect that new reality and to write it down really sit and write it down Libra moon I wish you all the best for this month and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. As with every sign, I'm looking at what old ground we're going to be covering because we've got Mars and Mercury going in retrograde. So we, we're covering some old ground here. Um, and then we're also going to look at what's new this month. So what old ground are you going to be covering? You've got Mars retrograding in your fifth house. Okay, so you could be revisiting old ground regarding your creative projects. Could also be to do with your children, you know, maybe um, some issue you've had with your children, maybe you're trying to teach them something, maybe they're trying to teach you something, right? Maybe there's something that you need to cover again. So you've got an opportunity to do it better this time. And uh, we've got Mercury retrograding in your 12th house. So this is really nice. Oh, I like this. Well, this could make you very intuitive. Now you're Scorpio moon, so I'm sure you'll, you'll be down for this. You'll be interested in this got the note here you could try a bit of channeling <laughs> um, if you haven't try it you know um, who knows you've got mercury up there you might you might be able to channel something interesting and I had a friend who I have a friend still have this friend um, she's got mercury in her 12s anyway she gave me permission she told me you should channel this and this and I uh, still haven't sat down and tried it yet I will one day I don't really have that gift or talent, but some people do. Um, you might. So who knows? At this time, you might be a bit more intuitive than normal is what I'm trying to say. Um, the other thing I've got here is that you could be covering old ground regarding spiritual lessons, something that you you think you think to yourself, God, I thought I dealt with that, or I thought I learned that, or I, th I thought, you know, God, I've gone over that a million times. Well, it may come again to deal with. And that's the old Byron Katie thing of welcome it, you know, um, welcome it, be with it and don't resist, don't reject, see what it is, you know. Maybe you'll have an entirely new way uh, of, of being with that, whatever it is. You could experiment and that's always a great thing to try. You know, the, the, I, well, I've, I've done it this way so many times, that way has never worked. Experiment, try a completely new way. Uh, now what's new this month for you? Okay, we've got some forward momentum. Saturn's moving forward in the third house. Great. This is so good for you. Firstly, he's in the third house, which we know is fantastic. Um, even though this hasn't been a good year, I know. I wish it would have been better for you, but um, yeah. I think I wish that every video, don't I? It's because I, I dream of having Saturn in my third house. My Saturn's in that big long stretch where he doesn't give anything. So, you know. But you got him in a good spot. So now forward momentum in your courage, yes, in your sense of courage. Um, hopefully that sense of fear, if, the, if you've had any fear over the last few months or any of that, hopefully that's really diminishing um, and going right down. It can now with, with this Saturn going forward in your third house. 
really great time to, in a concrete way, up the courage, right? Um, hopefully this is also, you know, Saturn giving you gifts. Now that he's going to be for going forward over these next few months, hopefully he is giving you gifts. Look out for those. Work with Saturn. Be receptive. You know, see what comes in for you. Now we've got full moon on the 2nd of October. We've got a new moon on the 17th of October. Let's see what this is. So full moon, I'm saying to everybody, let go of old plans. Let go of old architectures. Let go of anything old that wasn't working. Now it doesn't mean that it'll never happen for you. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is just let it go and it might breathe and it might grow, okay? So let go of the old stuff on the 2nd of October. Do clutter clearing if that helps you to really physically let go. But it's just an intention. It's just an inner thing that I'm letting go. Let it all go. Um, on the 17th of October, new moon. Okay, that's happening for you in your 11th house. Wow, this is fantastic. I am so excited for you, Scorpio moon. Wish big okay sit down on the 17th of october write out what you want what do you want to see for humanity what do you want to see for yourself what do you want to set up what do you want to create what do you want to do feel some excitement about it that new moon time is a really really brilliant time to plant a seed so i wish you well scorpio moon you've got a very good outlook here um one of the best actually so i wish you well scorpio moon we're now going to welcome sagittarius moon Welcome, Sagittarius Moon. Now with all signs, we're looking at what old ground we are covering. I'm just going to make sure that I'm definitely recording because if I'm not, I am good. Okay. <laughs> um, what old, old ground are you covering and what's new this month? For all signs, I'm looking at the old ground because we've got Mars and Mercury in retrograde. And we're going to look at what's new. Now for you, you've got Mars retrograding in your fourth house. So it looks like you're revisiting old ground regarding your home could be to do with your mother as well if there's been something maybe a challenge with your mother or, or something happening there with mother maybe that's some old territory you need to cover there um, regarding your home i mean maybe yeah it's a home related issue it could be a renovation type issue it could be um something to do with home okay this is something there Mercury is retrograding in your 11th house. So you are revisiting old ground with work contacts, colleagues, and or your friends circle. Yeah, absolutely. Let's have a look at both of those together. It's an interesting one. Retrograding in your 11th house. Could be something to do with gains as well. But it's not, nothing's looking bad there. It's just some old, old ground that you'd be covering. What's new this month? That's what we really want to look at. All right, let's take a look. Um, we've got forward momentum. Yay, we need forward momentum. We all do. Saturn is finally moving forward and he's doing so for you in your second house. So you've got forward momentum in regards to family and or your wealth, savings, um, your sense of stability, this is good. This is a nice bit of progress here. And it's not going to feel fast. It's slow, right? It's Saturn. When Saturn's moving forward, it's very slow. But it's the kind of thing that over the next few months should be good for you. So it's a big ship that has just turned and is about to set off in a new direction. That's a good one. Why didn't I say that in all the other signs? I only just thought of it now. There are some very wise Sagittarius moon people out there who are giving me some inspiration. Thank you. Oh, well, I've just recorded everybody else. I should have used that big ship tone. It doesn't matter. Anyway, um, let's have a look here. So 2nd of October, full moon, right? This is a time to let go of old plans. Do you have any old dreams, old plans, old anything that you need to get rid of? This is a good time to do that because it's all about the celestial architect. It's all about architecting a new reality. It's big, okay? So you're going to have to let go of some old stuff. Now, does it mean that that old stuff isn't going to happen for you? No, yeah, that's not what I'm saying. It can still happen, but the concept is let it go, okay? So if there's a big dream that you have, let it go and it might grow over there and then you'll be like, oh, cool, I am going to get that after all, but just give it some breathing space, really important. That's on the 2nd of October at that full moon and then the 17th of October we have a new moon it's in your 10th house oh this is fantastic so lay down brand new plans for your career architect a brand new blueprint for your success in the world this is very exciting and I've got the note here think long term 
Sagittarius moon, I'm so excited for you. Um, I think this is going to be good. Now, I do know that you're inside a South here. I think you're in the final phase of it. This is the home stretch. It's not going to be too much longer for you now. So hang in there. Thank you so much for watching. And we're going to welcome Capricorn moon. Capricorn moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, as for every sign, I've been looking at what old ground are we covering? Because we've got two planets in retrograde and we're looking at what's new this month. So the two planets in retrograde are Mars and Mercury. Mars is retrograding in your third house. So you're revisiting old ground regarding your friends, possibly. Could, do, could be to do with your confidence as well. I'm stumbling all over that sentence right there, talking about confidence. Um, could be. Uh, it could be, I mean, friends most likely. Okay, so is there an issue that you've had with a friend that you've just dealt with in the last couple of months? It might come back. You might have to deal with it again, or you, but you're very likely to do it better this time because you're watching a report like this, you got a heads up, so that's good. Um, Mercury retrograding in your 10th house. You could be revisiting old ground with your career or in your work environment, okay? So that's also something to look out for. Very often we revisit the same old thing again and again, and Byron Katie always talks about the principle of just welcome it, just, just say, okay, welcome it. And if you've been doing it the same old way again and again, try something new, try something, experiment, you know? Um, this could be a could be a time to do that. What's new this month? Okay, we have forward momentum. Hooray. We all need forward momentum. We've all got some. So for you, it's happening in your first house. Saturn is moving forward. Um, this is great. This is forward momentum in, in regards to your entire sense of self. And this is happening right on your moon. I know it's Saturday Saturday time and I feel for you. Um, hang in there okay it's you've timed Sadi Sati really well that you're having it now when the whole world is in a mess so you know it's this is a good time to, to be having a difficult um, transit like this so very well done on that um, not that you timed it that way but like your consciousness before it chose your life I always think that we're up there in this beautiful place and we choose our chart as if we're choosing like a cosmic jacket or something. We're like, mm, I want to wear that one. You know, I think it's like our chart, but it's like a cosmic jacket. Anyway, so you've chosen well is what I'm badly saying. Um, let's have a look here. So you are going to have forward momentum, even though you are going through a tough time. And you might not be going through a tough time. I know some Saudis out there, people who are like, oh, you know, they didn't even know they were in a tough time. <laughs> when I give them a reading and they're like, I was okay. But then, but then something will happen and they'll go, they'll have something to, they'll have Sadi Sati to blame it on. Anyway, right. Full moon is happening on the 2nd of October. I'm saying across the board to everybody, let go of old plans for your life. Um, old architectures, old dreams, let them go, let them go. This is the time to do that. It doesn't mean those things will never happen. They might happen, but you have to let them go at this time, okay? So any old dreams that you wanted, a house on a hill and this kind of husband and a dog and this and that, just just park it, just let it go. Um, it, it might breathe and it might get some life and it might grow, okay? But what you can do on the 17th of October, we've got a new moon. This is very exciting. That's the time to really write down what you really do want. And that might have changed because of the course of this year and how it's gone. So lay down your blueprints and your plans, architect that new reality that you really, really want. So Lay down plans for career, for the long-term future. Where do you want to be? Do you want to travel? You know, and that's going to open up for us again. It's not going to be like this forever. I looked, I Google searched it just today and um, I saw some Qantas chief or someone or other saying, you know, air travel will open up, up again January the 1st, 2021. So yeah, I, I don't see why not. I mean, but it might be, let's say for the next couple of years, the world's in a bit of a pickle because I do tend to think that Saturn in um, Capricorn, I mean, we've got another two years of it, so let's see how we go. But I mean, they are talking about things normalizing next year, let's see. Um, but lay down your plans for what you want. You know, a year is nothing. A year is a short period of time. So um, write down what you want for the long, long-term future. See if you can do that on the 17th of October. Now for you, it's, yeah, it's in your ninth house. Plans for career. For, for where you want to be, do you want to travel, pilgrimages, study, where do you want to go, what do you want to do, all of that. Capricorn Moon, I wish you well. I've spent quite a bit of time with you today. Um, 
but it's been fun. So thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. As with every sign, I'm looking at the old ground that we're covering this month and what's new this month. So for you, the old ground that we're covering is Mars retrogrades in your second house. Um, you might be revisiting old ground regarding your family. So if you've had any problems with your family or any of that over the last, I don't know, sort of couple of months type thing, you might be going over that issue again. Um, arguments are very possible, okay? So please be careful during this time. Um, I know what it is to, I mean, what do you do? You know, it's very difficult sometimes when you're angry. I, I understand completely. Um, but sometimes walk, walking the dog isn't enough, you know? So just be careful how you choose your words, say less, spend time in your, your own space, that kind of thing. Uh, Mercury retrograding in your ninth house. Mercury, well, you could be covering old ground in relation to your studies. Um, if you are studying anything, if you're like me and you're an eternal student, you might be um, <coughs> covering some old ground there. Could also be to do with work, could also be to do with your superiors, could also be to do with anyone you perceive as a father figure, authority figure, any of that. Um, maybe you're going to go out and protest Aquarius Moon and actually you probably would because you're an Aquarian so good on you and that's this is a thing to do at this time. Uh, let's have a look now what's new this month for you. Um, forward momentum so Saturn is moving forward um, in the 12th house for you. Forward momentum in regards to health. Yeah it could be to do with your health. Um, or even being isolated, if you've been overly isolated during this time of isolation. I don't know how much more isolated you could be, but for some people it will be particularly um, intense, that. So that, that, that might all release a bit and just, you know, there might be forward movement. Could also be to do with money. You might have had quite a financial drain, high expenses. It might have been really tough. So what I'm really hoping for for you is that this forward momentum of Saturn brings in some more money to help with those high expenses. If you've found it hard to earn money or pay things off, this could start to slowly get better starting from now over the coming months. So that's good news. 2nd October we've got full moon where I'm saying to everybody let go of any old plans that you have for your life, old architectures, old dreams, old things that you really wanted. I'm not saying that it's not going to happen, but what I'm saying is give it breathing space, give it room, give it time, let them go. Clutter clear if that helps. If you need to get rid of stuff, if you need to um, do some physical action in order to help you fully embody that for the full moon. So that's on the 2nd of October. And then on the 17th of October, we've got a new moon happening in your eighth house. So this is a brilliant time for you to lay down plans and architectural blueprints for how you want to share resources with others over the long term. So think about that, okay? Um, dream big, think big for you and for your family. Okay, and we're now gonna welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just looking at the time. We are running out of time. Okay, so for every sign, I've been looking at what old ground we're covering and what's new this month. So the old ground that you're covering, you've got Mars retrograding in your first house. So you are revisiting old ground and regarding, wow, this is huge, your entire sense of self. I mean, that's just amazing. If you feel drained or tired at any time, do rest. I think I have been saying that to you a lot, Pisces Moon, haven't I? Um, I say it more to some signs than to others. But with Mars in your first house, I mean, this is, yeah, you're, the, you're one of the two or three people I've had to say that to this time around. Um, or two or three signs, I should say. Uh, okay, Mercury is retrograding, but I mean, look, Mars, you know, re re revisiting old ground regarding your entire sense of self. I mean, it, it's huge. I can't just leave that. Um, it's huge. It's, and it's your masculine energy. It's your Mars. So it's, it's how you do things in the world. Um, how you affect change, how you, you know, and, and what are you fighting for? What do you believe in? What are you, what are you about? In terms of that do energy, right? Really important, um, massive. So you might be revisiting some old issue in regards to that. Mercury is retrograding in your eighth house. So you're covering old ground in regards to resources you share with others. 
or it could be to do with your occult skills or talents, but there's something in this area that you're revisiting. So if there's been in the last couple of months or in the last recent past, some issue to do with shared resources or any of that, you might be recovering that, um, revisiting that old ground. Okay, let's take a look at what's new this month. You've got forward momentum, we all do, fantastic, we all need it. You've got forward momentum happening, um, Saturn is moving forward in your 11th house. Brilliant. This is, oh, fantastic. Well, I mean, you've got Saturn in the 11th house. We know this is good. Um, this is good. So forward momentum in regards to work contacts, expanding your business, expanding gains. Maybe if things have been stalled for you business-wise, it's going to start moving forward for you again. I find that happens to me every year, no matter where Saturn is. I find that when it's retrograde, I don't get as much business. And then when he goes forward, everything starts to happen for me again. So it's really interesting. Also, you might have um, friends and colleagues. You might be able to make new friends and colleagues and that kind of thing. So this is great. Good expansion time for the next few months. Um, so 2nd of October, we've got a full moon happening. So now this is the one I've got a general message to say to everyone. Oh, we're running out of time. Let go of old plans for your life. Just let go. I'm not saying they won't. Apologies about that camera got cut. So what was I saying? I think I was saying let go of the old plans. Let's start again. So 2nd of October. I don't know if I'm repeating this, but it's okay. A little bit of repetition. Shouldn't matter. Um, 2nd of October, we've got full moon and across the board for everybody, I'm saying let go of plans, old plans that you've had for your life. So I'm not saying that that won't happen, but what I am saying is just let it go and it might be over there and it might breathe and it might grow. So let go of old architectures, old dreams, old plans, things that you know, do you know what, that's, that's just, you know that's not going to happen, right? Some of them you know it's not going to happen, some of them might, you don't know. But it's funny, when we let go of them, and if, if it's really for us, it does happen. You've got to believe that. So, um, so you don't have to worry. Clutter clear if that helps. If you need a physical action or something to really make it concrete that you've done it, clutter clear, get rid of old things. Do some kind of little mini ceremony to make sure that, yeah, I've done it, I've let go. So that's on the 2nd of October at the full moon. Then now this is the exciting bit. On the 17th of October, you've got this beautiful new moon, 7th house for you, um, and that's Chitra and Virgo. So this is a brilliant time. Oh, this is wonderful. This is a great time for you to create new architectures and new dreams for your life, for your entire life. And for you, it's happening in the seventh house. So this is laid down plans for your business or for your marriage, which really, for most people, that is their whole life. So partnerships. This is a time to visualize some really grand plans of what you want to see happen. And when it comes to business, visualize the kind of businesses you want to see on this earth. What kind of you know, the new earth businesses that we all want to welcome in. Let's get the energy of that going now. So the ideas of it, the, get it in our imagination. Because the more we visualize the future and what we want to have happen, the more that is going to happen. If we stop talking about all the problems in the world and if we start really just talking about and imagining and embodying all the solutions and all the things we want to have happen, this world can be so amazing and we can each have a little part in that. So Pisces Moon, I want to thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing and for commenting and all the wonderful things that you do. And I really look forward to seeing you next time. Please stick around on the channel. Hopefully this week <clears throat> I'm going to get the opportunity to do um, another card reading so hopefully that's coming soon uh, I try and get those done save for the weekend so that I'm not disturbing your working week but um, I also want there's a master I want to do but I might I'll give you a little sneak preview it might be Marlon Brando I don't know I've got a few in the lineup they're all I've like done the um, thumbnails for several of them already <coughs> Marlon Brando is one of them so that should be coming soon, um, but definitely the card reading should be coming soon. But thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. 
Hi Cancer Moon, I'm so sorry but somehow I left your sign off my recording session yesterday. Today I've just been editing the entire film and I've just put together, I think it's like an hour and 14 minutes of film and I left your sign out. Can you believe that? I'm shocked. I've never done this before. Somehow your one just got missed. I don't know why. So you are going to have to have me without my hair combed or any makeup on or any of that. I'm so sorry. So let's go through your sign and you can watch your um, rising sign and moon sign. So I recommend watching both. Definitely watch both. But Cancer Moon, as with all signs, I have been going through the old ground that we're each going to cover this month. You know, this could be quite good. You're going to get extra, I reckon. I'm going to speak for more for you. <laughs> um, okay, so what old ground are you going to cover this month? We've got Mars and Mercury retrograding for everybody in different places. So that's what I'm looking at, this old ground that we're going to cover. And it's kind of old, recent ground. So there's some things that you would have gone through recently. Mars is retrograding over, Mercury is retrograding over, going back, going back over some recent old ground. So where is that in terms of Mars? So Mars, it's happening in your ninth house. So career-wise, you might revisit old ground. Um, there might, you might have experienced some tension with an authority figure, right? Maybe your boss at work has been troublesome. Uh, could even be tension, something to do with your dad as well. Um, but anyone who's an authority figure in your life, you might be covering some old tension or it doesn't have to be tension it could even be a good thing but I mean how I'm reading this is that it, it might be some old thing that maybe you thought god I'm glad I'm done with that or something like that but it might come up again okay so just saying it might not as well so but it could um mercury retrograding in your fourth house you see because the thing is it depends on your unique chart as well this is a very general overview for a lot of people Mercury, okay, is retrograding in your fourth house. What does that mean? Well, you could be covering old ground, something to do with your home situation. Maybe that, look at me actually, I've just been covering old ground. This is fascinating. Hmm, where is it happening for me? Because yeah, I kind of messed up. Like I didn't include the Cancer Moon yesterday. I'm having to go back and do, oh, this is fascinating. I'll check it later. But it's that kind of thing. You, you might think, well, I've done that. <clears throat> But you have to go and revisit it and you have to do it again or something along those lines. So in a similar way that I'm having to redo this, um, you might have to redo something yourself. So covering old ground, something to do with your home, the space where you live, could also be, because it's Mercury here and Mother is here, communication to do with your mum. So maybe you've been communicating with your mum, maybe there's some thing there that you will have to revisit for whatever reason just in the same way that I'm having to revisit the making of this video. All right, now what's new for you this month? Let's take a look at what's new. We've all got forward momentum, hooray. I think we all need some forward momentum and Saturn is moving forward in your seventh house. Now, I think for Sagittarius Moon, I had the wonderful analogy come up and I only spoke about it in their one. I didn't speak about it for everybody, but it's like a big ship turning, right? Massive big ship has been turning, Saturn, and now it's just about ready to go forward. So you're not going to experience like fast forward momentum, but you're going to experience perhaps a bit of a release, perhaps a bit of a turn towards... Now for you, it's in the seventh house. This is brilliant. It, you, things, the pace could pick up in relation to your business, business partnerships, um, to your public, maybe you're a writer or you're a blogger, vlogger, any of these things, maybe you're a musician, maybe things with your public are going to open up. Um, it could also be to do with your marriage as well. It's other people, okay? Things to do with other people, um, partnerships, marriage, business, that could open up for you now and start to move forward again, which is great. We all need that. 2nd of October, we've got a full moon. Okay, now this is a great time to let go of old plans. If you've been carrying around any old plans, old architectures, old blueprints, I'm not saying they're not going to happen, but what I am saying is that you just, at this time, good idea to just let them go. Um, and they might breathe and they might grow. Okay, so it's not like it won't happen, but there needs to be some breathing space. There's a big 
heavy culmination here and just, just really try and release, try and surrender, do that kind of work on the 2nd of October. Then on the 17th of October, we've got a new moon. Now for you, that's happening in your third house. I love this new moon for you. This is so, so beautiful. The advice that I have here or the guidance that I have here is to get ready to re-architect your life. And for you being in a place of courage, this new moon, this is the place where I wanna ask you, you know, if, if you could be completely courageous and you had no fear, what would you do? How would you live? How would your life be different if you had absolutely no fear? That's a really big question. And it's through the contemplation of that question, what would I do if I was totally fearless? Through the contemplation of that question, you'll start to get blueprints and architectures for the new things that you wanna create, for the things that you wanna do, for that person that you wanna be, right? It's really, really exciting. So I love that new moon for you guys, Cancer Moon, and I'm super excited um, for your month ahead. It's looking quite good. I mean, all right, there's some of this retrograde energy. Some of that could be a bit interesting, but, um, but definitely Saturn moving forward in the seventh house. This is wonderful. Um, Saturn likes to be in the seventh house. He does well there. And this new moon where you're getting to contemplate courage and know that with these new plans and these new architectures and blueprints that you're going to come up with think really really long term think you know um th think think over the next at least several years what you really want to create and if you can i've written it down in my diary i've written it just today um but yeah I'm, gonna, I'm really gonna sit down and write it on paper because there's something about the act of putting it into the physical taking it from your mind and imagination and physicalizing it with your hands on paper. There's something magic about that. So do give that a go. But Cancer Moon, thank you so much. And I apologize that um, this has been a bit of a mess this time. But thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.